Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our workbook. We're going to talk about the life book, Element 5, tonight. I want to first welcome all of you, an opportunity uh, to connect. But we're very, very excited, uh, excited to have you here. I first want to start by congratulating and celebrating your successes so far. So many thousands of people are joining us on this live stream, and I, I just love it. I, I love an opportunity to really talk to you guys because um, basically, uh, it's that interaction that really makes a difference. And we're going to talk about creating a microenvironment of health tonight, which is so critical. But first, you know, as we start on this element and get going and optimizing your surroundings, element five, this element may take a little longer. It's actually designed to take one to two weeks. We always put this at the top of each element. And then we kind of go over what we're going to be doing tonight. And so we're talking about looking at your surroundings and see how we can recruit people, modified places, and change the things that touch your world. Discover how to create a microenvironment of healthy relationships as well as health in a bubble and put you in position to now bring assets, bring people, places, and things to benefit you. One of the key things we know is that our behavior is determined by the underlying structure. So one of the things I started looking at years ago, how can we amplify people's success? Well, it's kind of first creating this protective bubble to protect us from the things that can kind of influence in a negative way. And one of those things are not just places like going to a candy store, <clears throat> but also our relationship. Who are the people you should be around right now and who are the people um, that you really should kind of avoid? So let's kind of get started. First of all, one of the first things to realize and recognize always when we start this is that basically a microenvironment of health makes the difference. It really puts us in position so that we can kind of minimize that, you know, we talk about the hot or the go versus the cool or the no. And what we're talking about is what we kind of started talking about last week in element four. We're really focusing on which part of our brain is working. You know, and at a time like this, when the world is so uncertain and we're so stressed out and there's so much going on, not only are we more likely to be in that hot or the go area, but also what's more likely the people around us. So that can amplify. We talked last week about the drama triangle, about how important it is to stay out, to recognize when you're going below the line and you're starting to get you know, closed and defensive and wanting to be right, which charges it up and really activates. And we talked about the three levels of the brain, the reptilian brain, which is the basic brain that determines our breathing and our first reaction, the Labrador brain, basically, or the limbic system, which is what we're talking about when we talk about the hot or the go, and then we have our thinking brain, which is on top, which is the prefrontal cortex. And that is basically our cool or our no. That's where we want to be. We want to be alert and focused, um, throwing out a word that isn't in the element, but basically we have the autonomic nervous system. And the hotter the go is basically the sympathetic nervous system, which is fright or flight. And then we have the cool or the no system, which is the parasympathetic. And that's the state we want to be in. Cool, alert, calm, Deep breathing, we talked about breathing last week, about how you want to deep breathe and, and really calm yourself down, uh, and then obviously be very alert. In fact, even in terms of compassion with us as individuals, the vagus nerve is the key nerve of the parasympathetic nervous system of the, the no or the um, cool system. And even the vagus nerve, it actually amplifies and innervates our facial, facial uh, muscles. So when we're uh, empathetic, we're autonomy supportive, we have a very calm face, very attracting, uh, kind of compassionate space. When we're in a sympathetic, and we all know it, you know, you, you know when you're talking to somebody and either they're on the phone or something you say and all of a sudden you just see them go and their face just tightens up. Well, that's the sympathetic nervous system. That's that hotter, that go system. So what we can do is we can basically learn, and we're going to talk a little bit about more about emotions uh, this week and how important they are, but what we want to do is understand and recognize, just like we did last week, when you're starting to feel those feelings, tension in the jaw, which could be anger, or fear in the throat or in the gut, or basically the feeling in the heart of love or, or you know whatever the emotion is, we want to be able to identify that because then we can take that and slow it down so we can have a better chance of being in success. So, Basically, we're talking about how we react. We talked a lot about Stop, Challenge, and Choose, which is the technology that I found very, very helpful over the last several years to help people give them that, that space. And that space is so important. In a moment, we're going to talk about relationships. So the space isn't only important for you to be able to stop. Why am I feeling like this? 
challenge, okay, this is what's going on, and then choose something will make, make, make you turn out better. And we're gonna, actually, I'm gonna turn to that right now because I think it's a great time. Look at page, if you have your uh, life book with you, look at page 100 and uh, one of my most brilliant things was not doing it in the, the orange color with white, but 135 tips to help you stay above the line. So these are things, obviously at the top we have stop, challenge, and choose, and then we talk about things we can do. When you start feeling that hot ghost system starting to get activated, number one, immediately sense your breathing, which we just talked about. Two, feel that hot energy, cool it down before you speak or act. Feel that energy. We feel that, that tension, like have it just kind of go, and it takes about 90 seconds. Third, open your water bottle slowly and take a drink before speaking. I talked about that last week. Uh, count to 10 before you respond, giving that gap. Uh, sleep on it before responding. Man, not only is that good because you really settle down and isn't it amazing how the next day a lot of stuff that mattered to us doesn't matter at all? And I'll actually use an example. So let's just say on Friday, you know, just to show you how crazy our, our minds can be and our thoughts and our feelings. So let's say on Friday, you're just getting ready to leave work uh, and the boss uh, has a note on your desk or text you and says, hey, stop by the office before you go home and basically start worrying about it. So, you know, you, you, got, you finished what you're doing, you didn't see the text right away uh, or the email, so then you wait a minute, and when you go down, your boss is already gone. So right away you think, oh my goodness, what was this about, you know, what, what's going on? And then on Friday night you go home and you're probably thinking about it more. By Saturday you're really getting worked up thinking, oh my goodness, what, am I in trouble, am I gonna get fired? And then by Sunday night, you know, you say, you know what, I'm getting up early. Now you've never been to work an hour early in your life, but you're there because you're such a mess now. Everything's going crazy inside you, and you've got this huge go system. It's just got you running. You can't even sleep. In fact, you can't hardly sleep. You get up early. You're at your office at 7 versus 7.30, and you go down to see your boss, and your boss goes, and you're thinking you're going to get fired. And your boss says, oh, sorry we didn't connect. I had an extra couple tickets for the game this uh, last weekend, and I, I wanted to know if you wanted to go. And all of a sudden you realize. So, so much of the stuff we create in here, so much of the ego-based language and things really causes us to start building these emotional, what we like to call cognitive emotive loops. It means we start thinking away, then we start feeling away. Because we're stressed out, then we feel more that way, and it just keeps going. And that's why many people don't sleep well. 70 plus million uh, people in the U.S. alone don't sleep well because of that anxiety they have at night. So that's what we're talking about in element four and now in element five. The other part I want to talk about, which we didn't spend as far as our surroundings, are other relationships. You know, it's so part, important to know that, you know, we have so many people that love us or care about us or want to be friends with us, and some of them serve your journey to, towards better health and some of them don't. So I'll give you an example. Let's just say your aunt. So your aunt, basic, or your grandma, uh, fixes you, you love, I don't know, pumpkin pie, you know, with ice cream on it. And so she fixes you that. From her, that basically is a thing of love. She's expressing her love to you and she cares about you. And during this period, because relational health remains important, it's important to make sure that we respect her, but just kind of tell her right now that, uh, Grandma, I know, I know you love me so much and I just love that you think about me, but right now I'm working on my health because I want to be here healthy for you to help you and be with you and so I, I love you so much, but just for right now, please don't tempt me with this. And you know, I, I had the same thing. My girlfriend in high school, uh, right before the football game, she would always drop off hot chocolate chip cookies. And it was, it was my, it was my, it was my, basically sabotage me every time. Now, you know, when I was um, 18 years old, uh, in great shape and had about 10% body fat, it probably didn't matter so much. But I certainly, between the love of, 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 of being with her and before the football games, I, as soon as I smell them, boom, I'm done. And growing up, my girls took advantage of that. And so I know that when they cook chocolate chip cookies, number one, I don't want to be in the house. I don't want to even get the smell because I know it's going to sabotage me. And the second part about that is basically don't have them out. Don't have them around. It's kind of like, you know, we buy our kind of buy our discipline or our self-discipline uh, or willpower at the grocery store. Don't bring things home that you're going to basically uh, allow to take advantage of. So those are some areas. The other part is your accomplices. You have, you know, in the, in the life book I talk about writing down your five friends that are your friends. They, they, you've talked to them about your journey. They may even be, hopefully they'll be joining you on the journey because it's always more fun and also more success when we do it with our, our friends uh, or our family. 
but you know, who are your five best friends as far as supporting you and make sure you spend more time with them. Your accomplishment, accomplices are ones that want to get you in trouble. They're, they're the ones that are out there that are dangling, you know, whatever it is you love uh, in front of you because you know what, they haven't made the change uh, and basically <laughs> they want to keep you being where they are now because that's easier for them. So you want to stay away from your accomplices especially during the beginning you know as you build these muscles and remember we talked about going to the mental gym as you build these muscles and now you can stop challenging and choose and it becomes a habit you'll just look when someone offers you and it won't matter then you know those people that are accomplishments they won't have the same influence they have over you but in the beginning you want to maximize your chances for success so we want to make sure you're not around those people as much as you can, right? Because that's what's going to happen. They'll have an opp opportunity to either help you or if they're accomplices, they're actually going to hurt you and make it more difficult to sabotage you. So hopefully that's really important. And then, you know, one of the other thing is about social consciousness. It's understanding that basically how we talk to people can influence how they talk to us. So one of the things going back for a moment to the drama triangle, it's so important for you to stay above the line. In other words, not get pulled down to that drama triangle. Because in our relationships, especially in the beginning, when we're just learning it, especially with people we're close to, as you know, we, un unfortunately, it's just the way of life, but we're sometimes not quite as nice as we should be to the people we love the most because we take them for granted. And, you know, relationships that aren't that close, we may be more formal and we may, uh, we may communicate in a more respectful way. But it's important for us, especially for the people that are important that we're around a lot, is that we're working on the skills. And, and one of those skills is simply, again, stop, challenge, and choose, and basically work on uh, finding out what's important. So what I like to talk about is, you know, we all have different strategies in conversation, especially the difficult ones. Uh, we have different interests, but we usually have similar uh, needs. And our needs are, you know, the thing that really make a difference. So I was actually talking to a group of leaders last week, and we were talking about how we, you know, can really work being respectful in our conversations and really uh, listening to understand. Because, you know, as, as you know, when we talk about it in this element, uh, basically we're really designed to be great transmitters. You know, right when we were little, we learned to, you know, say what we wanted, you know, when we were little kids and, and basically talk a lot. We really are not good listeners. So that that's a... That's a part we don't have. But if we basically do listen uh, and listen to understand, everything can change. And so, you know, one of the things that's really great uh, is to think about it, you know, what's life on the, like on their planet? You know, when you're, you're going and doing, talking to each other, what's life on their planet and how can we figure that out? So one thing, just to take an example that's pretty controversial right now, but let's just say that someone says, I, I, I want to have an assault rifle. Now, that may be very different than what you think, but that's their strategy. But if you ask underneath, why do you want a salt rifle? And they say, because I live in a neighborhood that's a little sketchy and I want to protect myself. Okay, and then so why do, you, why do you need to protect yourself? Because you have the need, underlying need of security. So if we're having a difficult conversation about it, if we really focus on the need, well, there's many ways to create security that may not require you to carry an assault rifle. So just by flipping and kind of changing the conversation, we're now finding out what people need and, and their needs are, are, are really what drive all our behaviors. What The things that we are lacking in our life drive those behaviors. So if we can go to that, it can really make a difference. And so in the, in, in the uh, life book, I talk and give an example about figuring out, you know, what do I want in this situation? And so actually the situation that's in the life book is actually my family. And so one of the things for me is I like to keep my, my sink clean because, you know, if you think about it, you have more bacteria living around your inside your sink than you do in your toilet. I mean, I know that sounds, seems hard to believe, but because of food that lays there and things that aren't clean, it's amazing host for all kinds of bacteria. So I like my, I like my sink clean and that just happens to be that it's my house. And when my girls come home, uh, it's not so important to them. And I can remember having a discussion. It used to upset me and I'd get mad. Why do you not want to do what I, what I want you to do? And then I realized all I was doing was creating tension. So basically I said, okay, let me adapt that strategy. And so what I did instead was say, listen, and I told them exactly that. I said, listen, I, I like a clean sink. Uh, it's important uh, for me. And, you know, I, I appreciate you, you know, doing this and knowing that it's also better for you. And so by going over what the underlying need is and then basically interest in the strategy. So they had a different strategy of how to do it. I didn't care how they, they basically did it. I just wanted to do it. So there's all these things like just starting to think and be curious when someone's upset think rather than you know, judge them or put them in a box or put them, you know, start down the drama tri triangle them, 
be curious, figure out what life's like on the planet. So hopefully that, that's a little helpful. And then the last thing I want to talk about tonight is I don't like to, I like to keep these within 15 minutes, is I want to talk about the electronic leash. I want to spend a moment talking about uh, the whole relationship between a phone uh, and people. Because, you know, your phone is interesting because, you know, I know a member in high school, my girls be sitting there texting each other in the back. I don't know what they were saying. Maybe that was why. But basically, they're right next to each other. But they, they feel so comfortable. And, you know, teenage kids and, and, and young uh, adults don't feel as comfortable talking on the phone. They'd rather text each other. And, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. But we miss things when we do that. We miss that interaction. So, you know, there's many ways to kind of decrease the amount of stimuli that's coming in. You know, all those notifications, you know, when we were designed, when the parasympathetic, the, the cool or the no system, uh, was more the main way we lived back, you know, uh, 10,000 years ago. We didn't have cell phones, obviously, and basically we had maybe 10, 15 stimuluses come in. Get up in the morning, the light, the temperature, uh, tra traveling, thirst. There were very few things that actually senses that came in. Now we have over 40,000 different signals coming in each day in our life. And each one of those actually stimulates a little part of our brain and, and startles it. So all that data is coming. In fact, there's some work being done on cognitive decline that they think that all these micro impulses of all this digital information coming each time may even be stimulating a uh, release of epinephrine and norepinephrine and cortisol. And it may actually be having an effect on our long-term uh, cognitive abilities. So we're not sure on that, but you know, it's certainly something to think about. But basically, we know relationally, you know, there's nothing that bothers me more is when I'm talking to someone and someone picks up their phone and is on their phone. Basically, they're not being present for you. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't build quality in relationships. In fact, they've done some studies saying that even your cell phone, your smartphone, being on your desk, whether you're at uh, your desk or at dinner with other people, has a negative effect on our attention span. And our focus is, is so important. And a lot of us, we have, we have, we have uh, deficits, attention deficits, because of the constant stimulus with the phone. So basically, just a couple things to think about. You know, put it on quiet, get rid of, so you know, you're not getting, uh, I've actually done some things recently where uh, for emails and stuff, I'm using uh, different processes to, uh, to, to actually sort my email so I don't even see it unless it's one of the critical ones. And so it's trained to be either black hole where I never have to see if it's something I really don't want to uh, have, you know, from the advertisements and stuff. It can be uh, later so I can then do it, um, you know, when I want to. That way it doesn't disrupt me. And then the third thing is basically I can have it categorized so then I can come back to it. And the same thing with my notifications. I keep those off. My cell phone is, is in, usually in my, uh, my knapsack and then I bring it out when I need it versus and I have it turned on so I don't hear it. Uh, because you don't need all that all the day long. So that's one thing. The other thing is, you know, we have a thing called phone stack, and many of you may probably have heard of this by now, but basically when we go out to dinner as a family, we stack our phones, and if someone picks up their phone during dinner, they got to pay for the dinner, and you know, that, that can be tough on my girls since they're in college and they're not making a lot of money. So just these little things that can make all the difference. You know, one of the important things is, you know, really, we can kind of focus during this period as we converse with people that are important to us, we can go back to our why. It's kind of, of a thing that really makes it, why am I doing this? Why is it important to me? And then share that with the people you care about. Share, hey, listen, I made a decision that I really want to be, have a high quality life. I want to get down to a healthy weight. I want to move more. You know, I, uh, the last few days I've been up in Sundance and we went for a hike and uh, we had w where we were talking was way up the top of a hill. So rather than taking the shuttle every day, I took the... Uh, I took the, uh, just took the, the trail and, and went up on the trail. I noticed when I came home, even though usually, you know, when you go somewhere, you gain weight, I actually lost three more pounds. So, you know, that kind of activity and trails, and I live in a flat area, but just the recognition of that and the reinforcement is, wow, this is great. So, you know, how do I step that up? So all these things, and when you sleep well, and I'm going to end with this, because everything in our life, I believe, and what I believe has is, is been so important for me to be, you know, knock on wood in, the, in a healthy state for my life, really very, very seldom do I get sick is because I start with a good night's sleep. I take that Habits of Health clock, which you're, you're gonna, if you haven't read it yet, you're gonna learn about shortly, and I basically make sure I get seven to eight hours of sleep every night. And as a result of that, not only is it great for your health and your well-being and for your physical and mental health, but it actually, when you get a great night's sleep, relationally, you do so much better. You're more empathetic, you listen better, you're basically not overwhelmed, you're not distracted. So it all kind of starts there. So again, 
Uh, element five is a, is a great element. I, I, I really enjoy it because you have a lot more control and influence if you decide over your surroundings, whether uh, the places you go, uh, the people you're with, or the things uh, in places, uh, in, in places you, you actually habitate in. So all those things can be changed. So with that, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I always love coming to you. This is, uh, this is uh, Element 5, and uh, I'll see you next week. I'm, and also congratulations on all of you that have been tagging in and, and, and really working on your success. I've got lots of great feedback. Uh, video your stories or write your stories down. Uh, let's get them so we can share those and share this with people that you know may be struggling uh, during this this crazy time of our lives in 2020. But with that, good night. See you guys. God bless. Bye bye.